shortly after 4 p.m. right outside the Fairview Gardens. This is too much. I mean, every day. Residents say they heard the fire Tish, what's up? The team was pronounced dead. That's crazy. The shooting happened right over here where the residents. Let's have a family meeting. Why are you being rude? I mean, I know you see him on the phone on a business call. I said, let's have a family meeting. Get off the phone. Yeah, girl, go ahead. Wait, girl, I got to. Dad! No such Can I hold it? Sit down, boy. Why do you have a gun in my house? It's our house, first of all, and it's for family protection. You see what happened to Fred's son? Do you see that we have a son? And you know my story, so why would you bring a gun in my house? Jaya! Man, what up? Junior, who was that at the door? I know you in there! Jaya, no! I see you in the car, Jaya! Who was outside, Junior? Karen, man. Karen, how the hell I'm tired? I don't know. Go see. Go see. Go see. Go see. Go see. Go see. Of course I'm going to see. What's wrong with you? I know you have me! I got no bravo, Karen. I thought you said Junior was coming home. Look at you. You look so pathetic. Yeah, you was laughing then, but now you crying. You should have been on your knees when you was with him. Maybe you would have had a chance, bitch. Come on, kid. <laughs> that lady crazy. Come on. <laughs> I believe this was the day mama gave up on love and life. Okay. It's not okay, dog. I haven't slept in about a week. It takes time. But you don't understand what's going on in my head, what's, what I see, what I feel. Okay. Let me take a look here. Two years in Iraq. Three tours in Afghanistan. Very impressive. Huh. Several issues since you returned to the U.S. Trust me, it takes time. Issues? You know, I gave this country everything. Only to come back and for my country to forget about me? Hey everyone and welcome to Candy's Quarantine Conversations with me, Candy Delore. Joining me today is my special guest, filmmaker from the US, Anthony Weidman. Hello, Anthony. How you doing, Candy? How you doing today? I'm fine, thanks. How's the um, lockdown lifestyle in the US been treating you so far? Um, I haven't really experienced a lockdown, really. It's been... Uh... You know, just been doing what we do more. I guess we had social distancing more than really like a lockdown in my state. You know, we really just had like, you know, just um, one thing for sure. Um, Chief A, they never did shut down. <laughs> they made money all during the quarantine. Wow. Chick-fil-A and Starbucks, they made money during the court. They made money, so, you know. Wow. Yeah, so, I mean, so, that was, uh, it was kind of weird not to be able to go to the mall or whatever, but other than that, though, most places were still open, you know. Yeah. So. Well, all the fast food stores like McDonald's and Burger King and everything else over here, they were shut down for a long time, and they've just begun opening back up now, so, um, so when you, when you say shut down, you mean like closed, like permanently? Like, I mean, closed for a while, inside and in, in drive through Mm-hmm. They shut it down during the peaks of the virus. Right. I think some places, no, yeah, the drive throughs were shut down as well. So, yeah, yeah. some places have just started opening their drive throughs up before they start um, reopening the stores fully. Over here, we had drive throughs open. I mean, it was like crazy. We ordering steaks and stuff, you know. I mean, it was crazy. I mean, wow. it was like, okay, 
can't go inside the mall, but you can go to Starbucks or any other place and get food and drinks, whatever. So. Wow. Our yeah. Starbucks never here, shut down. I know you guys don't have Costa Coffee over there, but yeah, all our coffee shops were closed completely. Wow, wow. that's crazy. That's crazy. So, wow. um, yeah, speaking about being on lockdown, I know this isn't the first time that you've um, been, so to speak, on lockdown before. Um, and the last time that you were, you actually wrote something that you turned into a movie, which is amazing. So, yeah, tell us about that. Well, that was like 10, that was 10 years ago, but I was in jail for like 14 months. And um, I wrote a movie, a movie strip called Child Support. And uh, I'm happy to say the movie has been viewed five million times on uh, YouTube as we speak. So I'm very proud of that aspect, but not so proud of the reason why I was in jail. You know, that was a very, very hard moment for me to find myself sitting in a jail cell because of a situation that could have been avoided. But I had to man up about it, you know. Uh, take the take the medicine like it came. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. I mean, I'm sure that you're not the only man who has experienced that sort of thing. And to be honest, I have to um, applaud you for not just sitting down there and doing nothing. You actually wrote something about your life. And when you came out, you didn't just push it to the side and say, all right, time to move on with something else. You focused on it and you turned it into a movie. So tell us about the movie. Well, the movie is basically, I look at my life and the mistakes I made in my life, uh, dealing with a situation when I was, I, was, I, was, I was younger. I came from a, a broken, broken home, so to speak. And my father was never there, but my stepdad was there. But he wasn't really there either, you know. So I never had a father figure, so to speak, that showed me, showed me how to be a, to be a father or, or to be a dad. So when I became older, um, I became a father, and that's where I lost the connection of being a father and what a father means to your child. And the mother, she did some crazy stuff. She went and got some assistance and everything from the, from the state, and they put me in a situation. And um, I became um, I became an inmate in County Jail for 14 months because of that. But the movie itself is about my life and what I overcame and what I went through and how I made amends with my child's mother for the for the for the for the, for the good of my child, you know. So, and it's kind of funny in certain certain parts, but it's more just like a drama, you know. It kind of it ends well, but it's not really how I ended my relationship with my daughter's mom. But it's a movie, though. <laughs> well, it's definitely a very interesting and chaotic movie. But not just that; I can also relate to it, um, especially doing the work that I used to do uh, supporting women who were single and pregnant, or women who you know were raising children as single mothers. Um, I could definitely relate to the frustration from my own experience and from um, the things that women have told me themselves, which is relatively similar to the things that I went through as well. Um, right. And from the beginning of the movie, it had me because I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I can totally relate to this woman's pain and her frustration and her anger. I don't want right. to say too much because I don't want to give the movie away. It's really something that even if somebody explained it, you have to see it because the feeling it will put in you, um, particularly if you are a woman who has been through that situation or a man who has behaved in that way in the past, I think that it's even more painful to watch if you've grown since then because you see it and then you see right. how you, you know treated the other person and how they must have felt. When you're right. in it and you watch the situation, you will feel guilt, but I think that it really hits people who have been through that type of cycle. And right. 
What I really loved about the movie is the fact that it explains the whys and the hows, you know, why certain things happen and how, you know, the cycle can, t- can continue uh, mm-hmm. into adulthood. And even past, you know, when you're at an age where you feel that you should be comfortable and stable, things will catch mm-hmm. up with you in the long run. Um, right. I'd love to point out certain bits of the movie, yeah, but <laughs> yeah. I don't want to give That's it away. Right. That part I'm speaking about when um, the son saw his dad and he was literally like living in the bushes kind of thing. He had nowhere to go. He was abandoned, basically. It had turned around on right. him. And just like every single scene in there, it was totally relatable to someone like me. And that's why I even contacted you. you know, that's how I met you, to be honest, because the film was so powerful. Um, and the work that I was doing, watching it, I could relate to it so much. And I thought, I have got to find out who wrote this movie. And I thought it was a woman. I really yeah. did. I, <laughs> honestly, because on this credit, it just said A.F. Weidman. Mm. It didn't say Anthony Weidman. So mm. I thought, this has got to be a woman. She must be angry or, you know, she's been through something. <laughs> Especially as how it started. It started off with a woman, you know, right. and she was frustrated she was in pain she was hurting and I just you know when I realized that it was a man (laughs) I just thought whoa you know he has either really you know had some experiences in his life or somebody has helped him to understand how women feel when this sort of thing happens to them you know um (laughs) well well thank you for those those kind and those kind words candy and what happened was you know, I was in jail, so and all the men that were in jail with me, we had a visitation um, one day a week on Sundays. And but the but the uh, courts here, the courts had put us out there as being deadbeats or bad people or bad men, whatever. But when the kids came to visit us, visit us on Sunday visitation, all the kids came, all our kids came, and our kids loved my kids. Well, my son came at the time, but. My other children didn't come, but the other men's kids came, and I saw the love that these kids had for their fathers, you know, and how I and, and how my son loved me. He didn't want me to. He didn't want to leave me. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, man, you know, we're not we're not dead be. We're not people that are don't care about our kids. The court has a situation where they put a value on your child. You know, your child's worth this much amount of money this week or this month or whatever. And to me, that's some bullshit. They're, you can't put a value on, on a human being. You know, mm-hmm. they did that. They did it in times of slavery. True. They, they did it in times of slavery. In slavery days, that was, and that was, that was, that was messed up. But in child support, in the system, they put a, a price tag on your child. So they say, well, your child's worth this much amount of money this week or this month. But they don't care about your child. They don't care about how your child's doing in school, how your child get getting to school or from school, what your child's eating or, or anything. They just say, "Look, pay this amount of money, and give the courts. The courts gonna get this amount of money from that money. So it's a money thing. The courts make money off of your child. You, you, I mean, you go to work, pay your taxes, pay child support, and the courts, the court system gets money off of off of that." So you can yeah. and a child support fee, and they and they're gonna win. So you miss that payment or two payments, or whatever. You, you go to court, you go to jail. They get they get they get more money. They don't care mm-hmm. if your child's crying at home and missing you. I miss my dad, I miss my daddy, but the daddy's in jail because of the court want to lock you up. They don't care about that. So mm-hmm. the, the the system doesn't give a damn about children. Or the parents, honestly. The women think, oh, well, I got awarded this amount of money for child support. Okay, but that means what? That means that if you don't have a job, then that little bit of money that, that you're getting, it can't, it can't support you. You can't, you can't pay your rent. You can't pay your light bill. You can't put, you can't put food on your table. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't do all those things that, that need to be done. Yes, yes. That's, that's a small portion of what it takes to raise a child, you know. But a lot of times women, they, they, they become um, 
discombobulated about that. You know, they, they get it. They get involved with if the man and woman they break up, the the woman or the man, it doesn't matter. It becomes personal. Uh-huh. The woman the woman's mad at the father because he has a new girlfriend. Or the father's mad at, at the mother because she has a new boyfriend. Uh-huh. It's personal now. Uh-huh. I'm, not, I'm, not giving her, I'm not giving her my money to spend on, on on this guy, or she's going. I'm not going to give my money to him, or whatever. Yes. But, you know, she's mad because the woman looks better than her, or whatever. You know, I, it's crazy stuff. It comes personal. It's, it's really uh-huh. sad. It's sad in a sense. But the, but the child is the one that's go. The, the child the one that's, that's out there losing though. The child's going to lose in the end. Yes. Yes. So the parents, as the parents sit down and learn how to learn how to, to communicate with each other. And co-parent. Mm-hmm. That that's the key to everything. It's understanding and co-parenting. You yeah. do what's best for that, do what's best for that for that for that particular child, you know. So so yeah, that's where that's where I was at though. I was that's why I worked that movie because I wanted to, I wanted to tell my side of the story. Mm-hmm. You know, I was I was actually in jail um, on some fraud situations. The mother was the mother was defrauding the government. But they made me responsible for paying the money back, you know. And she was getting money from me, but not, but not. She was, but she, but she was turning the money in though. She was telling the people that she was getting money from me. She was, she, she, she was getting money from me and the government. So that's why the amount is what the amount, amount is because she was getting money from me and from, and from them. So I mean, and that's. That part of the story I didn't put in, in the movie because that's 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 gonna, that's that's for part two. That's that's gonna be a part two. I didn't really get into the system. I wanted to tell the story of the personnel of the personally for my story. Yes. About what I was dealing with and my guilt and my um having to grow up as a man, you know, having to re- having to figure it out, you know, having to really really dig dig that deep. deep. And, and and grab my and grab my nuts and you know be like and, and man up, you know, had to man up. So, but uh, yeah, that's what I, that's what the movie's about though. It's about manning up, you know, um, being a man and being being a father and overcoming your past. You know, whatever whatever wasn't there in your past wasn't there for a reason. Yes. You know. But, um, you know, totally um, understand what you mean. And to be honest, it wasn't until I watched your movie and until I'd had, you know, various conversations with you, did I realize just how deep um, child support actually goes. And I do think that if a man is not looking after his children and if he doesn't have a job, mm-hmm. then the government should do something different than just to send them to prison or take things away from them to prohibit them from doing certain things because it's not going to help that child you know um, we should probably you know do some kind of mediation or you know something that's actually going to benefit both sides so the anger doesn't get worse the bitterness doesn't become more um because that sort of stuff just lingers into the future. If you put the father of your child into prison as well, um, especially over child support, uh, reaching a place of forgiveness in the future will be very, very difficult, you know, and you don't know what else that man might have to endure in there. He might come down with, you know, mental health issues or having, you know, have competition or rivalry with other people in there. And he's not like them because like you said, he's not really maybe a, violent person or a bad person, you know, who hurts people physically, but he might just cause this woman, the mother of his child, emotional pain. And mm-hmm. it's not, you know, some some mothers who are really angry, like you said, it gets personal. Mm-hmm. They won't care, you know, when the father of the child goes to prison, they'll think, okay, it's payback time. But mm-hmm. um, it can make the situation a whole lot worse. And maybe the government should do something. Well, not maybe. The government should do something to um, get around that and not send um, men who are in debt to their children to prison because it doesn't help the children at the end of the day. It just makes the relationship they have even more distant. Would you agree with that? 
Yes, I do agree with that. I agree um, wholeheartedly about that. When you, like, like, like here in my state, you in jail for child support, you in jail, you, you can lose your whatever you had, nine times out of ten. If you're not paid for it, you're going you're gonna to lose it because you're in jail for 90 days to like a year. You can't pay for anything. Um, you can become free labor. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you actually in jail, you actually working for for free. So you get out of jail, you have two weeks to make it to make your first payment. Okay, well, it take two weeks or, or longer to, to, to find a job. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm mm-hmm. So you're really at a disadvantage to the system. You know, the system really broken beyond repair. And nobody cares because as long as those guys who are out there who are doing the best that they can are paying into the system, then the system is, is making money. And that's the bottom line. It's all about a dollar. It's all about a dollar over here. And no matter what you do over here in the state, the money is the, is the bottom line. You can buy anything with a dollar over here. Anything. I mean, it's a sale. You know, and this society someday it's gonna it's gonna pay the price for that someday. Because I, mean, I think that the um, um it's very unfortunate, but statistics do show that the um, majority of men who do have child support debt are um, from the black community. So a lot of men, a lot of black men, are being sent to prison over child support which is creating even more broken families even though they might have been broken before it's making it harder to be fixed and that's definitely an issue that you know it should be looked into um about how we can solve this about how we can come to uh, an understanding um and put new laws and regulations in place that will protect the children who are innocent well, and I do agree with you on that, and it's a sad situation, but this this system is put in place basically it took the it took a page from the from a, from the Willie Lynch uh, situation how will he well, how he told people how he told the slave masters how to control the slaves well, if you divide them over something like during during slavery it was feel feel slaves and you had you had they had you had house slaves, right? Well, think about this right here. Money. Money is the root of all evil. When you think of money between a man and a woman, you say, look at a lady, I'm going to give you this money if you leave this man alone. Now, time not saying she's going to choose that money over that man. And I hate to say that, but the problem, I know it's I know it's twofold. I know it's both people, but if we had stronger black women in the country, I mean like the stronger black women who wouldn't fall for that. Like, oh, I'm gonna give you some money if you so and so and so. If you if you, if you just went with, if the women were stronger black women, then I think we could eradicate some of this some of these, these black men that's being that's in jail right now. And now Ladies might they might get mad at, at what I'm saying, but what I'm saying is that when you bring somebody else in, into in the middle of your relationship, then you give that person the power to dictate how it's going to go. Mm-hmm. Meaning, meaning that a mother and father and a child, but you let somebody else, else come in and tell you, okay, I'm going to help you so and so, then you're going to make that you're going to make somebody's going to be somebody's going to be um, alienated. At some point, and nine times ten, it's the man. The man has taken; he'll take the back road, and and he'll be the scapegoat. You know, nine times out of ten, I don't know many women that are child support. I don't know. I don't. I don't know many women. The ones who I do know that are on child support, they have drug problems. Why would you put a woman on child support that that can't support her own drug habit? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's, 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 make, let's make the system worse. 
Mm-hmm. You know that, okay, she, she, she don't have a job, she's on drugs, she's, but she's on child support too. Yeah. Her, her life never, I never, her life never get back on track. Never, yeah. because she's already in its, in, in its hole already. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. And yeah. um, that's where you said that you think if, you know, women were stronger in certain situations. I understand what you mean, but when uh, a breakup happens or when you're hurt or, you know, when you feel like your child is being neglected, you feel weak inside and your anger does weaken your emotions and it's a journey for many women and I'm speaking from experience it's a journey you know you go from being hurt to being angry it's like the five stages of grief you have to go through all of that and then you reach a place of calm you know then you reach a place of maybe when you can look back and say oh gosh you know I did that to him (laughs) you know (laughs) I was so mad (laughs) so it's you know women we're emotional so (laughs) on that side of things (laughs) <laughs> See, that's the key word. The key, the key word is emotional and the word hurts. Okay, an example. My mother had me when she was 16 years old. She was 16. She had me. She had me in a cotton field. She was going to school one morning. And she and she had me. Now, my father was nowhere around. But my mom, she didn't lay there in the field with me. She got her ass up. Got me together. Finish, finish high school, got a job. You see, you see what I'm saying? My I'm father didn't do shit. My father didn't do anything for me. He never did anything for me, like in my whole life. You know, no nothing, nothing, nothing monetarily for me, nothing. Now, that's my point. Strong, right now, women are these days. First of all, they're too damn young. They, they become mothers at, at a young age. They don't know. They don't know anything about anything. And second of all, they're not. They're not built like they used to be built. You know, you're a strong woman. You're strong. So I don't know. So I can't. I can't. I can't speak on how you went through that period of time where you what, what you what you went through, but you became emotionally. You became too involved emotionally. I think. I don't know now. I wasn't there, but. Right now, are you still are you at, at that point now, or are you stronger now? I'm stronger now because I went through the process. No, <laughs> you were stronger <laughs> then. You were stronger then, but you, you just didn't realize it. Okay, understand what I'm saying? You are already strong from 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 your from your DNA. Our, our DNA is strength already. Our DNA is already strong. Okay, we can overcome anything. We can forgive and overcome anything it is in, 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 in this world. It's proven. It's proven that you know what I'm saying. So don't let a little bit of a little bit of emotional pain, a little bit of hurt. Ah, I can't do it. I can't. No, that's not true. Because down the line, you'll be doing it. You can do it down the line. It can be done then. I understand what you mean, but I still think that sometimes you need to go through that pain to get that strength. The pain I, I, builds you, you know. <laughs> if you if you want to feel pain, that's fine. But I don't. I, <laughs> I don't want to feel the pain, but I'm just saying that sometimes you have to be completely broken to, you know, start putting yourself back together stronger than you were before. So I get what you're saying about, I I do agree to an extent with what you said about, you know, you always have strength. You just went, your perspective was different then, you know, and sometimes it takes that hurt for you to gain a new perspective and come back stronger than you were. I get that, but here's the thing. A lot of times we do that. We, we get all caught up in our emotions and our feelings and everything like that. And, but that, that time period is wasted time. I understand. It's time wasted because. But wouldn't okay. you say that it's time learning, you know, as well about yourself and how you okay. deal with things and how not to deal with things. So it's time like learning lessons as well. Well, I'll take that back. I won't say it's, Waste of time. I'll say for each each individual, it's a different process. I, I get that. Yeah. Okay, myself, I deal with, I deal with, with uh, PTSD, and when I go through my moments and things, 
the time that I'm depressed or when I'm going through my situations, the, the, the key for me is to pick myself back up as soon as I can, as fast as I can. Because if you let yourself go too far, you get in, you get in the second in the second place, you can't come back sometimes. Mm-hmm. You can't get back sometimes. You can't get back to where you where you where you used to be. Yes. And I've learned that through trial and error. You know, so I get what you're saying, but I learned that you gotta stay you gotta stay fighting. You know, you gotta keep on fighting every day. You gotta fight, fight, fight because yeah. we start fighting when we start punching. I we'll definitely agree with that. I agree you know. with hundred percent with that. And you have been through quite a lot and you've overcome many challenges in your life. Child support isn't just the only thing. Um tell us about how your movie Missing Me came about due to your own experiences as well. Well, that movie is about a military um, veteran who was dealing with um, PTSD and a relationship with his wife and his and his son. And um, because of PTSD, he became estranged from his family. And uh, like myself, I write from I write from my own experiences. I can't write from anything else but my own experiences. Mm-hmm. And I make I make projects based on on what I know about. Well, this particular veteran, basically based on myself, the character based on myself, he he's taking the medications and everything, trying to get better for his family. But once that, once your partner, once she sees you at your worst. She can't. She doesn't trust you anymore. She can't trust you, you know. And um, it's a, it's a very, very. I think it's a good look at, at what what we go through as veterans with, with PTSD or or just, just just anybody really. But I think that we depend on other people being there for us. But the, but the problem is that we don't know how to reach out to that person, tell them what's going on. We have a problem of trying to, because it's embarrassing to me when I was going through it with my son's mother. Even 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 talking to you when you came to the states, talking to you about it, I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed to talk, talk to you about it. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't want nobody to think I was crazy or whatever. I wanted to just feel like I was my old self again. Well, the missing me title is about I miss who I used to be. You know. The person that I used to be didn't have anxiety. It didn't have impre- depression. It, it, it didn't feel um, panic attacks, whatever. You know, I didn't go through all that. I felt then I was always confident. Now I'm not so confident. I'm not so confident all the time. You know, I'm pretty much like, eh, you know, in the middle sometimes. So it's a big, it's a big situation where trying to explain to someone what you're going through is very, very difficult, very, very hard, you know. And once you do that, you, you still feel, you know, you still feel, um, I, feel I feel vulnerable, you know. Yeah. You know, I don't want to be judged by, 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 by things that I suffer from, but a lot of times we are judged by that. Yes, um, I can totally relate to what you're saying about being judged by things that we suffer from. Um, However, I think that you are an absolutely strong man. You're so amazing. Everything that you've been through, you write about it and then you make it into movies and then people can learn from those movies and they get insight from the movies that you create. Every single one of them, they're so inspirational, they're motivational, they empower people, especially Missing Me will empower veterans. You know, it has a happy, well, it has, an, it has a happy ending, yeah? So, yeah? You know, it will make people with um, PTSD believe that they can also have a happy ending. It will give them the strength to continue. And sometimes when they're at their weakest point, they might reflect on that movie. Oh yeah, this is what happened to the guy in Missing Me. And it's a real life story. And it yeah. will make them want to continue and keep going. So I must say that, you know, you have managed to turn every negative 
in your life into a positive and that's something you know that's really something so you should definitely give yourself a big pat on the back for that <laughs> well thank you very much Kenny but I feel like writing is my therapy you know I believe that um if I didn't if I didn't write I probably wouldn't be here right now you know I wouldn't be I probably I probably wouldn't be alive and uh that that led me to my book, um, Too Strong for Suicide. That book is my life, my life, my life story, my whole life story. You know, every every relationship, every woman. I mean, it's a it's a tell all. It's my memoirs, you know. So I wanted to tell it all because I didn't want I didn't want I didn't want anybody not to be. Not to, not, to, not to understand me or whatever, you know what I'm saying? I want everybody to understand me while I think, why I think, how I do what I do, and why I do what I do. And to finally have all of that compiled into, into, one, into one book, I'm like, man, that's a lot, but, but it's my life, though. You know, so it's called uh, Too Strong for Suicide. It'll be out in, um, in uh, August. Okay? And uh, you want to follow me online, I'm on uh, Instagram and I have a Facebook page, but I'm not, Facebook is not really my friend, though. I have some bad uh, situations on Facebook and, and Instagram, but, you know, and, and on Twitter, but, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know what I mean? I didn't mean to laugh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I had some bad uh, situations. <laughs> <laughs> but oh Kenny, Kenny, hopefully you'll leave the my uh, links and everything in the comments description and everything on the, I will. On the interview. I will. Okay, Most definitely, I will. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think quite a, a few of us have had some negative experiences on social media. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. I can definitely relate to what you are saying. I had one the other day, actually, funny enough. Well, <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> it's crazy, huh? It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think, I think uh, social media is great to a certain degree, but it gives too many people too much, too much, too much insight or too much leeway to actually judge someone that they, that, that they don't even know. That's you know. True. So I think that, well, that's really <laughs> Like you know somebody very well and all of a sudden you change your lifestyle they don't fit into it they become right. angry and some people who can't hack it will actually go onto social media and start writing horrible things about you because you know they can't take that you've left them behind and move on with your life <laughs> yeah that happens uh that happens uh, i heard that happens a lot yeah it does. <laughs> <laughs> funny really all you can do is laugh or you'll cry yeah. so um, tell us about um the other movies that you've made because i know that it's not just um child support the movie and mr me i know you've got a few more like trayvon martin you've got a short movie about him yeah the trayvon martin story uh theory um i wanted to tell the story about i want when, when i met trayvon's parents in miami um a few years back, um, I wanted to do a story that gave a different, per, a different perspective on what what could have happened. You know, not about the situation where he was shot and killed, but why Z Zimmerman actually was following him. You know, so that movie is on. Um, it's actually on. Um, it'll be on our new movie uh, streaming service called uh, MovieMovieTV.com. It's called MovieMovieTV.com. I know I talk really fast. I'm sorry, but... MovieMovieTV.com. That's your new TV streaming service. You can watch all your films on there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be uh, up and running in about three or, four, three or four more days. You know what I'm saying? I'm very, very, I'm very proud about that. Yeah. And, and also, if anybody has any movies over there in, in the UK, they want to put them on our site, feel free to, to contact me. And let's go. You know? Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. That's absolutely, yeah, that's amazing. That's great because I know sometimes it's so hard to get your movies onto bigger platforms like Netflix and stuff like that, Hulu and whatever. 
So um, yeah. I think it's good that you're starting your own and it could be a platform for people like yourself who have made real life movies about their real life experiences. Yeah, definitely, because really I'm going to take um, um, my book and turn it into a series of different short films based on the book. You know, that's that's what I want to do. That's what I, it's going to be pretty interesting about. It'd be um, some of it will be X rated, you know, but you know, <laughs> it's my life though. I can't, I can't, I mean, I can't help it. I've been around a lot of a lot of celebrities. I've, I've met Tyler Perry. I've met a lot of people that are in the industry. I've been involved with a lot of people, and. Um, Thank God that I was able to walk away from a lot of situations, you know, and still maintain my my dignity and my, you know, you know, because the the, the, the industry is hard. Mm -hmm. I don't really care for celebrities that much. Celebrities to me are really assholes. Honestly, you know, that's how I feel about celebrities. Not not all of them, but the ones who have that I'm God type attitude. I don't deal with those people. You know, I've I've I got in arguments with with um, the rapper Ti over his wife. You know, different di different things. So. For you, you did Ti and Tiny. Not not with Tiny. I know Tiny, but I'm talking about with Ti. I know Ti too, but he was just you know feeling himself one night. He he wanted to argue, but he's a, he's a you know he we're cool now. But I'm, I'm talking about at that point in time. It's in the book, though. Okay. You want to read the book? The, my, my book is had everything in it. My book is full of everything. Okay. Everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know. Well, that will definitely be something to read about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's going to be interesting, though. Well, tell us about your movie, Karma, because um, when you told me a bit about it before, that sounded quite interesting. Uh, yeah, about the seven the seven women who uh, killed, killed the one guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's very, very, it's very uh, crazy, intense. When will that be out? Uh, hopefully this September. But he deserved it though. Okay, you deserve it, right? <laughs> yeah. And then we have also we have a series called uh, Secret Nympho. Secret Nympho. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, can you give us a bit of insight as to what that's about? <laughs> There's a guy, and there's some women. <laughs> and okay. There's some, there's some sex. Lot, well, actually, there's lots of se lots of sex. So, yeah. Wow. So, is that based on your life story as well? Can't tell. Can't <laughs> tell. Well, you've been so open about your previous shows. So. You have to watch this one to get the grip on it you know because yeah the thing for us right now especially for me is to create these shows these projects that are are entertaining they have to, they have real life to them they're not just made up stuff they're just real they have real life you know what i'm saying situations to them yeah about about a real people or a real person mm -hmm. and um i want i want to bring that kind of in it you know but my whole thing is reality films. I want to break reality films to the screen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so our streaming service is very, very um, poignant on that on that, on that that note. To bring the real life reality stuff to the screen. You know? And um, because I can't write if, it, if it's fake, I can't write if it's fake. There, if you look at our movies, there is, we have a couple of, you know, guns, props and everything, but the fights and everything, the fights are real. Like, the pounding, you know, it's real hitting going on in that movie. That's why all of your movies have that kind of reaction where, oh my gosh, I, I can relate to this. I'm feeling it, you know, <laughs> because it's from, it's based on real life. And movies like Child Support, the movie, um, Good Guns, Good Bullets, that is an excellent right. movie as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, like, when I watch those, it's just like, oh my gosh. I can feel the frustration of some of the characters. I can feel the pain of some of the characters. I can literally relate to everyone because it's real life and I've seen it happen to other people or I've experienced some of these things for myself. 
So it's definitely, you know, your movies are definitely outstanding and I would recommend all my viewers and listeners to watch Anthony Weidman's movies. And um, what's the other movie that you said was about a mother? What's it called? A mother who um, um, sent her son to jail. Between Mothers. Between Mothers. Between mothers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But Between Mothers, that's, that's a film that um, I wrote. And uh, Javon Johnson actually is uh, helping me uh, shot the movie right now. Javon works for Tyler Perry okay, on this show called The Oval. Yeah, Javon is he's the uh, he's the butler in the show called The Oval, okay. and uh, he's a good friend of mine. And and uh, my cousin, my cousin is Chad Bozeman, the uh, the Black Panther. Yes, yes. My cousin, so we're we're trying to um, come together on a project, hopefully. Because you know, you know, as we look around right now, you know, the Hollywood is kind of like shut down. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I think everything now is going to streaming services now. Everything be going to streaming now. Everything is coming out is going going to streaming on that kind of platform. So I think we are ahead of the game right now as far as being independent filmmakers. You know, having our own streaming service and having our own our own projects and everything like that. I think we have a uh, we have a real opportunity to make some real things happen for us. Yeah. Opportunity. Yeah, definitely. You know? I, agree with that. I think that now is the right time for you to, you know, get your movies out there, especially worldwide, because places, countries like the UK, uh, we're still on lockdown, you know, we're just raiding out Netflix. It's great to watch something new and something fresh and something different. I'll share movietv.com on um, my platform when it is up and started because I'm sure yeah. everyone will be grateful for a brand new streaming service. Thank you, ma'am. And it's very, very cheap too. It's very, very cheap. Cheap. Good. Good. How, how cheap? Uh, two dollars a month. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, that's a know, very good price. Two dollars a yeah. month. Wow. Yeah. So it's not like it's not like you know we, we're trying to we're trying to provide entertainment. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's all. Provide, provide, provide entertainment and and just. Some, it tells some good stories. That's all. Yeah. yeah. That's it. And um, also, I want to bring to to your attention that um, whatever you're doing in the, in the UK, I want to support it over here too. So let me know about what you have going on, and I support it over. And I promote over here. And we'll do that back, and, back you know, send the, uh, um, back and forth and everything. Okay? Uh, brilliant. So, any production companies watching from the UK, if you'd like to collaborate with Anthony. You can contact him on, it's Anthony underscore Weidman at Instagram, isn't it? Yes. And, yes. Um, or AF Weidman on Facebook. And mm-hmm. you can, yeah, reach out to him and tell him about what you've got in mind. And I'm sure that he will respond to you as soon as he can. And he's definitely a great guy to work with. And he'll keep you laughing. That's one of his traits. He's very funny. <laughs> well. Wow. Yeah, when it comes down to business, he's very serious about that too. But I think that should be your next uh, project, working on a comedy, because you're very funny. Actually, I think you told me that you're working on a comedy, isn't it? Well, actually, I have a a, a story about one of my good friends, um, Skull Bubble. Okay. He passed away. He passed away, and uh, he was a comedian. But I met a lot of a lot of comedians through through him, though. You know, but I, I have a story also. His story is like Do- like Dolomite. I mean, Sko was fu- he was funny, man. Sko was the most hilarious cat I ever known. Like seriously, man, he was a funny dude. Like had me laughing all the time. But the, the comedy that I wrote is called F Friday is Saturday. Like it's kind of something like Friday, the movie Friday, but it's called F Friday. Yeah, F Friday. Right, yeah, F right. Yeah, it's funny though. It's funny though. I mean, it's it's hilarious, man. It is, you know. I can imagine. You have to um send me a link to that once that's up and running as well, so I can see it for myself. Hopefully, you'll be over here in the states when it comes out. Back down memory lane. (laughs) (laughs) You crack me up. I'm editing this shit out. I'll just, you know, yeah. <laughs> right. So, 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 Candy, let me ask you a question. Mm-hmm. How is it 
how is it living in the UK? Are you at, are you outside in your in your garden or what? What what are you doing? I mean, what's going on in the UK? <laughs> well, um, I'm on lockdown with the kids at the moment. Yes, the, yes, the lockdown. Yeah, they uh, opened, they reopened the schools for like a couple of hours and stuff, but um, I've decided not to send the children back to school until. Yeah. Right. September or when things calm down and to be honest you know I want to come to America as well so <laughs> ah, coming to America part three <laughs> part three yeah, no, seriously though I want to come to America I want to come and see you I yeah. see my mom I feel yeah. like I've been on lockdown for so long and it, you know the whole virus situation has made me realise exactly who and what is important you know the people you love and just having, you know, a reality check on certain things. So um, I want to put the people in my heart first before getting back involved in helping the economy run and all this stuff. <laughs> right, right, right. I understand. I understand. But yeah, but uh, definitely uh, it was great being on your interview, being on your show. I mean, I'm, I'm proud of you for doing what you're doing. Um, Thank you. I'm proud of you too for everything that you're doing. You know, despite the setbacks, despite the things you've gone through, despite all the challenges, you just keep on going. And, you know, you're so strong, like I said, not just physically, but emotionally, mentally. You are an inspiration to people who have been through things that you have been through and they get to see you overcome it and see you keep going. And I know that for you, it's just an amount of time before you make it to where you need to be. <laughs> so, um, especially if you're so determined, no matter what happens, you just will keep going. And um, people like you who just keep going, they eventually get to where they need to be. So, yeah, I'm yeah. really proud of you too. Well, thank you so much, man. Thank you, Candy. And uh, keep on fighting, baby. Just keep on fighting, that's all. Yes. Just keep fighting. I want to thank you so much for coming on Candy's Quarantine Conversations today. You have been a super special guest. And um, I'm going to put all your links to your movie below on the YouTube link. Everybody just click on the link and it will take you to Anthony's page, PNW Productions. And um, I recommend starting off with Child Support the Movie. Absolutely love that. Then watch Good Guns, Good Bullets, and then move on to Missing Me. And then after that, just choose whatever ones that you want to watch. Thank you. <laughs> you might need to explore some of his personal videos, especially the one I saw that he made the other day about quarantine and women and taking time <laughs> and all this crap. <laughs> yeah, okay. Ignore uh, that. <laughs> why? It was, it was funny. It was funny. <laughs> my videos, my videos, they're made to be funny, you know what I'm saying? So it's about, it's comedy though, it's funny though. But still. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, but you didn't know that I saw that, did you? <laughs> didn't know, didn't know, didn't know, didn't know. But the key thing of it is, did you, did you, did you hit the, the subscribe button? Yeah, I'm subscribed right, okay. to Okay, good. We're doing music too, we got music on that too, we got music and everything too. We got music going on. I'm gonna check out the channel somewhat. To be honest, I um I just went to the one where I saw your face. Okay. <laughs> I pressed play and I heard you speaking about that, and I was like, "What?" <laughs> well, <laughs> well, the ones with music and everything, or other people's music projects, I put it on the page, you know, because we have people out with videos and everything. Okay. So it's, it's like it's not really my music, but it's their music, but they're on my page though. Okay. Just have to have to promote them. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Um, that's the key of it, working together, you know. You know, you have to work together with, with each other. So that's the key. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, when you come to, can you, when you come to America, uh, do, 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 do me one favor. What? I brought some fish and chips. Fish and chips. You got fish and chips? Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll bring that for you, don't worry. Do you remember that time when, um, I took back the fried chicken and macaroni to England and the people in the yeah, yeah, you, you, had whole, you had a whole luggage full of that stuff, man. You had everything. <laughs> Candy, oh, man, you had everything. And it the guy right. in the gas station called all the staff out and he's like, look, this woman, she's bringing all this food back to London. <laughs> That's crazy. That was crazy. But you, you, had, you had it in there, though. You had it in there, uh, packed in solid, though, man. It was solid in there. Packed yeah. in nice. I think you had to give me one of your suitcases as well. Yeah. 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 
It was wild, man. Yeah, the terminal, they told me I was overweight and I had to pay, I think it was $70. I can't even remember how much, but I was overweight. <laughs> hey, you had 10 pounds of macaroni and cheese in that bad boy and, and fried chicken. <laughs> that fried chicken and macaroni and cheese is good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good. You're wild, but that's what's up, though. Definitely, man. So I see you. I see you real soon, all right? Yes, I'll see you soon. Thank you so much for being a guest on the show today, Anthony. I appreciate it. Hey, anytime you want to come on and get some jokes, let me know. I got some jokes already lined up. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. All right. Take care. You take care too. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.